So hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I'm gonna do a little bit of a recap on my thoughts in regards to the engagement interview. I know that most of you have watched that and if you haven't, I will put it at the end of this video. You can click on the, the little thumbnails. Um, but I'm gonna do a recap on that and then obviously also recapping on the things that have come up in the media at the moment in regards to Harry's court case, uh, the possibly going to the Africa thing, um, and yeah, and what's kind of just going on. Before I delve into other things, I'm just going to try and catch up with what has been going on in the mainstream media. So that being said, you should know what to do by now. And if you don't, grab your drink of choice and you can scroll past this, people. You can mute it, fast forward to the main part of the video after the intro. Um, so yeah, so grab that drink of choice, drop it in the comments what you're drinking as you sit back and relax and watch this video, um, or maybe you're eating something, who knows, um, or you can add a little something something to that drink of choice because as I always say, it is five o'clock somewhere. So grab your drink and let's dive right in. So for those of you who have not seen the engagement videos, I do suggest you go across and watch those because that will also help in what I'm about to talk about now. Uh, there is a part one and a part two. If you don't like the voices, which I know a lot of you don't, myself included, but I had to struggle through that for you guys, um, then of course you can mute the parts where they're talking because actually even when you mute, you can watch their body language, which is very, very interesting in, in my opinion. Um, now, I have heard a lot of you say that you would like me to do the uh, the William and Catherine engagement video. So I will do that as a palate cleanse, because um, even though it's not in a way, it's there's not going to be as much. But I think it will be nice to do that as a sort of a compare and contrast to the way the setup was for Harry and Meghan. Um, however, I've also, I'm gonna put a poll on my community page because I know some of you have asked me to look at other various things in regards to the two of them and break it down in the same way. So let me know in that poll what you would like me to look at. And again, if you don't like listening to them, mute them because like I say it's their their body language is is very interesting even in regards to the Oprah interview I think if I do the Oprah interview given how long um the interview is is I think was it an hour or two hours um I actually didn't watch it. I saw snippets of it because I struggled with it. However, if it is something, if I can find it somewhere, because I think, you know, a lot of places it's the whole video. I'm not sure where I can find the whole video now, but I will break that down and maybe do it in, say, a few parts. So, yeah, I want to talk a little bit about what I took away from the watching the interview, because when I, it was interesting because when I first watched it, when it very first come out, I knew straight away that there was something off. I knew that there was, there was some dishonesty there that, I mean, I didn't know it to the point where I know, like where I've literally sat and picked it apart and looked at it sort of frame by frame in a sense, you know, this was kind of just a general, like watching it and getting that feeling. And I know a lot of you have put in the comments that you've got that same feeling as well. And I think that shows you that your intuition, you know, if you were getting a sense, I mean, you know, drop it in the comments, how many of you got that sense that when you were watching that video, that something was off, that tells you that your intuition was kicking in. And it was correct because we now know the things that we know now. Um, so it's there, you know, for, for everyone to see right back uh, then. Even if you didn't necessarily understand what that feeling was, you got a sense of um, something's not right. And I would always say trust that because it's that instinct. It's And that's why it's called instincts, because it's instinctive. A lot of the time when we have those instincts, what comes in then is our conscious brain, because this is kind of going from whether people want to call it uh, intuition, higher power. Some people say it's God, you know, whatever it is that you want to refer to as what this is. It is that instinctive moment 
seconds even where you get a sense that something's not right and that is what you trust now a lot of the time I can completely understand that you're not necessarily going to know or understand what it is but if it's a feeling of mm, something's not right like you're about to go somewhere and you're getting that sense of just something's not right but then your conscious brain will kick in and kind of go oh, you're, you're overreacting, you're just being oversensitive or don't be silly, et cetera, et cetera. We all have those, those thoughts that will kick in. And so a lot of the time you will then believe that thought process rather than trust your instincts. And how many of us, whether we've been in friendships, relationships, situations where we have all said, I wish I trust my, trusted my instincts or I knew like if you got into a very bad relationship, I knew something wasn't right with this person. I should have trusted my instincts. And yeah, there it is. And a lot of the time, unfortunately, is that we don't we don't listen to that side of ourselves. Um, and I believe it is your best friend. I certainly myself even been in situations where I've got into a friendship or a relationship and it's gone horribly wrong. And I knew I knew pretty much from the beginning with certain things that something wasn't right but I bypassed it because I either wanted to believe the person or I, I there was something else I was invested in and that person was part of that so I kind of bypassed what my instincts were telling me um, and then when it all went wrong you kind of go I knew I knew my instincts were telling me um, whether it be you've been in a narcissistic relationship or friendship you know I've certainly like I say I've been in that myself so it's trusting that and I think I wonder if um, Harry had those instincts with Meghan in the beginning uh, when he very first started seeing her. Now, I think, unfortunately, a lot of Harry's problem was that he masked a lot of things with drink and drugs, as we know. So what happens then is that even if your instincts did kick in, you're not going to pick up on that because it's just not even going to be in his field of awareness because he's going to be either very drunk or very uh, high or whatever it is. And that's why I do believe that when they first got together, it was very much sexual. I think he did find her a very attractive. I think, that, like I say, that she was probably swinging from the chandelier. She, we know, and I've talked about the video with regards to the sex tape. I think there were things that she would allow him to do and I think that's where he thought that he had got this most amazing woman and this is not unheard of there are a lot of people men for example that have got together with a woman and for the most part she will do anything in the beginning she will do anything he kind of wants in the bedroom if this is his persuasion if you like and but then also acting as if she's uh just like she probably cooked for cooked for him or she did other things like say pretending to be humanitarian wanting to do what he wanted to do so in his mind he's got the most amazing girlfriend in his mind at, at the beginning so it kind of makes me wonder when the intuition started to kick in with him when did it start to uh happen that he was getting this feeling that something wasn't right with her now, obviously, we now know in regards to in Skip's wedding, there was something that happened prior to that because they broke up. And then she turned up at the wedding, I believe the wedding or the wedding reception, um, and she wasn't invited, but she turned up. There's pictures of them looking a bit tense and fraught. And then they're leaving together at the end. And again, I think that was a sexual thing. I think when she first turned up, perhaps he wasn't as drunk. So it was kind of a bit like, well, you know, why are you here? Uh, she's probably trying to talk to him. Whatever it is that she's doing to persuade him. And then the drunker that Harry probably got, the more then the sexual side kicked in. And they, from what has been said, they went back to the hotel room and things were said and done. Now, it's possible that in that moment, he used her because he wanted to sleep with her. But in Megan's mind, and bear in mind, this is all, this is all hypothetical because this is just how I'm viewing how a narcissist works or how someone like Harry would work. I don't think he was serious about her in the beginning at all. 
Uh, in fact, I'm not even sure if I think he was ever really serious about her. Uh, so I, what I think, so here's my thoughts on what, how I think the engagement or the relationship kind of went down. So I believe they obviously got together at Soho House. I think it was set up by Megan. I do believe it was potentially Harry didn't really know anything really about her. I think he was probably set up possibly by Marcus Anderson or possibly even one of his cousins. Not even sure if I even believe the friendship with regards to the cousins. I have spoke about that in another video where I talk about the Prince Andrew situation and I do think that that was dropped in as almost like a code for I'm going to say that I'm friends with them, but I don't I don't actually think she was because if she was friends with one of the sisters, I do believe there would have been things seen. Um, I do believe that. Well, then she certainly would have known about Harry. There's no re no way that you can be friends with one of the uh, the York sisters and not know who Harry is. Um, but I don't necessarily believe that to be true. It's possible that she may even have, she may have had a, a conversation with one of them, being if uh, one of them are in the circles that she run she ran in when she was with Jessica Mulroney. But I do generally believe that that was a made up friendship, and I think that was almost like a dig at the fact that um, she has had that relationship with Andrew prior to that potentially if we go back to the things that I've said in regards to uh, when uh, Prince Andrew was yachting. Anyway, so I think this was, yeah, this was orchestrated and set up. I think she knew about it. I believe that, um, so I think she knew about it, but Harry didn't. I think this po probably was a bit more of a blind date with, with regards to Harry. I don't think he knew really anything about her. So this was potentially set up and I think, like I say, they got together, they probably got very drunk, but they they had lots of um, sexual relations and then obviously day two happened and it moved very quickly. And I think the reason it potentially moved very quickly is because Harry, I do believe, um, thinks with his todger and he probably was so bowled over by the fact that she was very adventurous in the bedroom that he got very excited by that. And it does happen. A lot of uh, guys potentially uh, feel that if they find a woman that will literally do anything in the bedroom, they almost feel like they've got the perfect partner. They don't think about anything outside of that. So I do believe that that is how it moved very quickly. However, Megan would be looking at this from the different angle. So she's looking at this from the more manipulative. You know, I know that I can't sustain this, but I so I've got to find a way to hook him. So I think that she would be plotting and planning literally behind the scenes with regards to Harry. Harry being a bit of a dimbo, I think, unfortunately, um, is just going to be listening to anything that she comes up with and thinking it's that's that's who she is. Like they're talking about being humanitarian. You know, I'm, I'm you know, and I think she would have given him this sob story of how awful her family is and how she just worked her way up the ladder. And it's like and they just want her for her money. You know, you can you can imagine this happening. And all the time, Harry's probably just taking all of this in. And like I say, and they're, and they're connecting together through um sexually and probably in a way of he's probably either that rescuer part of him is kicking in especially as we now know that she was wearing Diana's perfume so something some some trauma bonding would have been going on as well for Harry but this would have particularly quite sort of probably confused him because he just you know at the end of the day this is not a conscious thing this is a subconscious thing so I think that all the time she's working behind the scenes to secure him. But Harry, as we know, is a bit of a player and he doesn't I don't think he settles down uh, with with somebody unless he genuinely likes them. Yes, he does. I think like her sexually, but I think there was probably something because he was seeing somebody else at the same time. And the reason I think he then sort of went more with Megan is, again, because of the sex. Let's be honest, you know, when, like I say, when you're somebody that is doing everything in the bedroom um, that somebody wants, again, you know, and the, and this person is saying that how much they want to be supportive. It's like they, you know, they, they love everything that you love. You are going to think that you, well, some people are going to think that he's got the perfect partner. 
So the reason I then think that the Botswana thing obviously then happened is again, I think this is a, probably Harry just thinking with his todger again. It's like having this, you know, five days of the most amazing uh, sex, etc. cetera. Um, and I'm sure there were conversations and amongst all of that. That's what he's going to be thinking. But you've got to remember as well that there are there are potentially drugs and drink involved in this. So in my opinion, it is very conceivable, even though they have said in the interview that they got engaged at Nottingham Cottage. Um, and this is where some of the confusion happened, I think, because in my brain it was it, I was thinking it, but it didn't quite translate on camera. I think potentially they got engaged or got married um like you would do maybe in vegas oh yeah let's get we're very drunk yeah let's get married let's do it um there now what i then think potentially happened there was obviously they come back to the uk and again hypothetically harry would have either then the reality would have dawned in the fact that they harry has now proposed to this woman and he's even though he's not particularly very serious about her um or they got married whatever which one it is and he's potentially made a mistake it's moved too quickly so what i think then would have happened is you have then got megan who would have latched onto that without a shadow of a doubt so i possibly think that this is when harry dis maybe started to distance himself she started to panic and Harry possibly was like, you know what, I need some space, I need to think about this. Um, and then he's gone off to Inskip's wedding. She's then obviously completely panicked, thinking that she's going to lose her cash cow. And so she has then gone to him and a conversation has happened where she's potentially said, if you drop me within this, or if you don't go ahead with this, this is going to look bad. This is going to look bad for you because I'm biracial. And this is where I possibly think the race card would have been used because uh, there's two scenarios. This is the first one. So, the, you know, I'm biracial. You know, you've you've married me and now you've you know, or you've got engaged to me and now you're having second thoughts. You know, I this will go in the media and this is going to look really bad for you. This is going to look bad for the royal family because it is going to look like you don't want somebody biracial and it's going to be that you're a racist family. So that's the first one where I think that's potentially what happened, which is why they looked a bit fraught in the beginning because they're, ha they're having these conversations. The other one is that she's, in my opinion, possibly uh, said that she's pregnant, allegedly. And these are just me just giving some thoughts here. Um, and yes, that's conceivably possible. And I do believe that there is ways to, you know, fake this, create a fake pregnancy test. Um, you know, you've only got to say, no, I like to, I want to do this privately. Harry is I don't think Harry is the sort of person that would challenge that because she's quite domineering, I would assume. So she's come in and said, you know what, I'm pregnant. You've, uh, you know, I'm pregnant. And that is possibly what I think could could have happened. So, of course, then Harry would be then panicking because he's now got this woman pregnant um, and he doesn't quite know what to do about that. So he would have possibly gone to the family. And I think then the family could have potentially said, you've got to marry her. If you've got her pregnant, this is going to look incredibly bad. You have to marry this woman. Um, now, I think then along then, possibly it could have been because I think if it was, say, say if, if they got engaged first i think that could have been another way of well we'll now do an engagement you've already got engaged um we'll now do an engagement because that's going to be bad now whether or not harry could have dropped out of the engagement but i think that's when the possibly blackmailing was happening and um, where she would say or oh, this is going to look really really bad it's going to um, we, um, you know it's going to be because you're you're you don't want a biracial woman in the royal family so either one of those scenarios, I think, are potentially what could have happened. Now, if it was to do with her pretending to be, say, pregnant, then it is also very conceivable that she would then have a, and I'll put this up here because I've got to be very careful here, and she would pretend that. Now, for the people that think that's not possible, it absolutely is possible because how could you question 
a woman who has said, I've miscarried. How could you question a woman, call her a liar, if she says this has happened? Bearing in mind that, like I've said before, when I have spoken about this, you can buy, because it is used in films, um, and I'll put this up here as well, you can buy this. Um, and so you imagine the scenario and you've got to bear in mind that regardless whether or not you think that she is a good actress and not a good actress, um, she is still one. So it is very possible that she would have acted out laying on the bathroom floor. She's poured this over her. Now, you can imagine with Harry that this would be devastating for him, potentially, you know, this is, you know, he's been thrown into this situation. They're not married. Um, they've either potentially got engaged in Botswana or wherever, or even if they haven't, then if she's using this, you know, what does he now do about this? So, of course, he would then probably go to his family and his family would, or probably the, his, his grandmother. And that is when potentially another scenario of, well, you know what, you, you're going to have to stay with this woman because not only that, it is going to look incredibly bad for you if you decide to leave her after this has happened. And you, you're not going to question that. Now, I do think that it's even possible that they said, look, we'll get the doctors to look at her. If you have somebody that goes, I don't want that. I don't, I don't have any trust in the royal family. I don't want anyone looking at me. Then you're still left with do we believe her or not? And it is very difficult to question. This is why she's very clever, in my opinion, with the things that she pertains to have suffered from when it comes to mental health. So, for exam example, how do you question somebody that um, says she's uh, pregnant? How do you question somebody that says that she's had a this? How do you question somebody who's potentially got a fake pregnancy? Um, it's very difficult to do that because all the woman needs to do is say, I want I want to be private. I don't want to expose my bump or I don't want to talk about this anymore. It's too upsetting. Even if you suspect it is very difficult to actually say this without forcing the person to go to a doctor to prove it. Um, and even that is something that's very difficult because then you are then if it's come if it comes out that actually she's telling the truth, which I don't believe she is. But then you've just accused the woman of lying about something and that could backfire. So it's almost like I feel like they're damned if they do and they're damned if they don't. But I think whatever happened around the Inskip's wedding, around leading up to that, it is either the fact that they've already got engaged and or got married in Botswana under the drink and drugs. Um, and she has clung on to that and said, well, you've married me now or you've got engaged now. You can't take that back. That's going to look really bad for you if you take that back. Um, or she's turned up at Inskip's wedding and said, I'm pregnant. And that then, I, although whether or not that's the truth or not, I don't, I don't know. But there's, like I say, so one of, I think one of those things have happened, but something happened big enough for him to get back with her or it is the fact that she turns up, they've got had a few drinks and then he thinks, well, I'm going to go back and I'm going to swing from the chandeliers again. And then she has then orchestrated something in that moment. Even if there was nothing leading up to that, she has done what I would possibly see as a sex tape. That's the third theory. I said there was two, there's three. So there's possibly then a sex tape. Now, some people have said, so what? So what if there's a sex tape regarding Harry? Now, if you imagine this is somebody who has done things in the bedroom, which could be seen as um, not something that possibly you and I would do. So when you're looking at, say, BDSM, bondage, etc. Now, if you've got Harry in a situation where he's either doing something to her, which without any context looks terrible, um, or there is a third party involved, that is going to be very, very damning. I don't care what anyone says, you're not going to want that released into the public. 
if it was just a normal sex tape of, of Harry having, just having, say, normal sex, I don't think that would be an issue. I think if there is something, I think it's possible that she's got him to do things within the bedroom or there's another person involved that would show Harry in a very terrible light if exposed, especially given the fact that we know that she would come out and say, I, I didn't want this. You know, this was orchestrated. I didn't I didn't want this. Um, so I think that's potentially also a third scenario. Whatever has happened, then suddenly we have then the engagement. And in that engagement interview, to me, you can see that he's so uncomfortable. There's moments when he looks at her that he doesn't even look like he actually likes her. She's very over the top. She's also very unsure with certain things like she looks to him for validation. Um, you can see how he's not even comfortable either. In my opinion, they don't come across particularly believable. But I think, again, it's, it's you know, if people, if you look behind like what's being said and their body language, you can see that. But not everyone does. So that's why I then think that leading up to the wedding, when you see the wedding, when you see the look on Harry's face, when you see the look on the Queen's face, I don't believe this is a wedding that is born out of I, I love this woman. As he, you know, I love this woman and I hope she loves me. Who says that? That to me was one of the biggest things in this whole interview was when he said, I love this girl. I didn't even say woman. I love this girl and I hope that she loves me. How have you not had that conversation? Who gets engaged with somebody if they don't know they love them? Surely the engagement happens most, in my opinion, when you are so in love with each other that you want to marry that person. There shouldn't be a shred of doubt that that this this person loves you. But to say, I hope she loves me was very, very telling to me because he doesn't know. And instead of reassuring him, she she doesn't. Not like, of course I do, silly, or, you know, I absolutely... She doesn't ever really flatter him. He talks about how wonderful she is and, oh, she's capable of anything. Pfft, well, we know that now. Um, but she never really says anything like about him, like how amazing he is as a person or, and that's very telling. Like, like I say, it's sometimes it's not what is said, it's what isn't said. So that's kind of my thoughts on what I feel potentially happened. Now, I know other people are going to have different scenarios. And like I said, I'm not saying that I'm right. You know, I do get a lot of people saying that some of the things I say are very conspiracy theorist or very out out there. And yeah, they might be. I might be completely off the mark. But I've learned over the years to trust my instincts. I've learned over the years to really study um, people. And I watch a lot of uh, like true crime things, which is another one of my passions. I, I really have studied. Uh, it is kind of one of my real passions in studying people. And I get a good sense of of who that person is. And I genuinely feel that this was engagement, was not a, an organic um, engagement. I don't, I, I feel like this was either the royal family saying, you, you've got to commit to this girl. You, either the fact that you uh, got engaged before because she wouldn't have wanted to let this go. And even though the royal family, yes, okay, they could have maybe done something. But when you've got a narcissist involved who is, I'm not letting this go. And if you if you dump me, then I'm I'm going to say whatever. That is something that the royal family don't want to get involved in. And so it's very possible that they would have said to Harry, you've kind of made your bed, you've, you've got to lie in this now. You know, you've committed to this woman. You've either married her in Botswana or you've got her pregnant. Um, you know, you've got to you've got to see this through now. And there would be elements when she would be amazing to him, the love bombing. And so there'd be the moments he would hang on to. So in, then, so in a way, he's probably convincing himself that, you know what, I could make this work. She's quite, she's okay. Yeah, there are the moments, but she's okay. I, you know, we could make this work. And then I think it moves into what I believe to be a business arrangement. Then it becomes, you know what, we're not really in love with each other, but 
I can facilitate you leaving the royal family. You don't like it here. Let's use what we've got and we can take our titles and we can be part of the royal family, but then go to America and we could be like king and queen over there. You're, you're never going to have that here because of your brother and Catherine, but we could we can go and we can take over America. And I absolutely believe that's what she would have said to him. And, it, and unfortunately, Harry, it's not the brightest spark, 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 Spartacus, <laughs> spark in the book. Um, and I think he would have believed her. It, I don't necessarily think he ever wanted fully out because he. I do believe he loved his grandmother, albeit that it doesn't seem like he did after the way he's behaved. But I do think he did. And... Um, and so I do think he would have still supported the royal family. He didn't want completely out, but Meghan had ulterior motives. And I think she would have utilised everything in every trick in the book, including. Uh, and I will talk more about the the the, the fake, uh, in my opinion, the fake pregnancy. I will do a video on that. Um, but this is just what I my thoughts in, in how the engagement happened and why. Um, but like I say, let me know in the comments what you think regarding that. And I want to just add on the end. So, of course, now we've also had the fact that Harry has had his court case thrown out. He's still got the one coming up, I believe, with the Sun newspaper. But we've had that thrown out. And I am so glad in a way that because what this will now show Harry is just because you are a prince, um, it does not mean that you get away with things. Um, and this is a real victory, I feel, for um uh, you know, for justice in a way, because what Harry was doing was was disgusting, in my opinion. He was bringing this uh, and, you know, by his own admission, trying to clear up things in regards to Meghan. And I will say this behind the scenes of this, this is all about IPP status. And I do think this is about controlling the negative press in the media. Harry and Meghan want all the positive press, but they don't want the negative stuff. And I think that he believed and Meghan probably was there fueling this behind the scenes of that I'm a prince of a UK. I've got all this power to get this changed. And if he'd have won that, this would have done, you know, his ego would have been huge, but he didn't. And I think this is showing him that regardless of what you're feeling or thinking, you cannot come to a court of law and lie. You know, bring in your feelings as... The, the well this is factual because my feelings were hurt that's not evidence if you're not going to come with evidence which then takes me to a lot of things what we see on social media if you are not seeing the evidence then take it with a pinch of salt don't even just believe what i'm saying i see in some of the comments oh i believe you and that's wonderful that you do but always bear in mind that this is just my opinion there are plenty of other people out there that have different opinions watch everything and then inform your own um, opinion on something don't like say don't just always look about what is being said look at the evidence look at the uh, the the actions of a person and if a person is showing you, this is great, to me, a great saying, if a person shows you who they truly are, believe them. So on that note, that's it from me. So as always, don't forget to give this a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to not miss future uploads. All of the links to everything that you will need will be in the description box of every single one of my videos. If you would like to buy me a cuppa as a, as a, as a thank you, um, if you want to super chat me, you can. The links are in the description box, but the super chat is right next to the subscribe button, I think, um, or the like button. Um, the buy me a coffee little logo is above the subscribe button, I think. Um, but you can send me something in the PO box. You can send me an email. I do try to get to everybody, but as always, I'm backlogged and I do try. So if it is urgent and you really want me to put urgent on the reference bar and I will hopefully see that. Um, and in between my work and clients, I will get back to you. Uh, I do apologise if I'm not seeing your comments. I am trying, I do try to get to as many as possible uh, to read them because I do enjoy reading your comments. Um, but I do apologise if I miss you. And if there is something urgent that you'd like me to, to do, I don't know if you can uh, tag me in something um, or you can maybe write it in capitals or rewrite it again and I might see it. Um, I don't know. I will try my best or email me. If it's something urgent, email me. 
Um, so yeah, so that being said, I will see you in the next video. So thank you so much for your wonderful support. And if you go across to my community page, look out for the poll and you can put your own suggestions on there of what you would like me to break down next, whether it be it's the Oprah, the me you can't see, <laughs> um, the, uh, the, the wedding even, um, the docu mock you series, uh, if you want to watch, you know, if you want me to look through any of those and break those down, then I, of course, I will do that for you. Um, but if you haven't supported my other channel, please go across and do that. That is actually now called Tea and Therapy, uh, and that is all therapy related things to life coaching as well. Um, and yeah, so in the meantime, have a wonderful rest of the week and I will see you in the next video. So take care. I love you. I appreciate you. But most of all, I respect you. Take care. Bye.